What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Another Thursday here. Heads up, advisor. Tonight, we're going to be talking about self-funding. Again, selling self-funding to blue-collar clients. Um, you know, when you look at industries and we look at prospects and we go, we try to find our ideal client profile. If you're talking self-funding, blue-collar is the way to go. Because when we look at that industry, what you hear and see is, is, that the margins are tighter and tighter. You know, you got all the other countries in China they're competing against and the, the labor force and what it costs to have labor. And, you know, their margins are tight. And not only that is they're typically a lower wage um, industry, right? And so they cannot cost shift money to the employees because they're tapped out. They're not making that much money. So the employer then has to take on the cost. So what does that mean? That means, well, if I get a 20% increase, I'm pretty much paying 18, 19% of that increase where most other companies, blue, white collar may be paying 25 to 50% the employees picking up. So again, more pressure on the company to do things. And quite frankly, again, they're not as profitable as a company. Their per employee per year profit margins are lower. And so there's a lot of pressure. So when you look at companies, who would make a move? Who's in a situation where they have to change, where they may go out of business? Look at those lower per employee per year profit margin companies, which tend to be in blue collar industries, manufacturings, so on and so forth. So just from a prospecting standpoint, I want to point that out going into your fourth quarter when you're going through your lists, because we're here, guys. I mean, it's I've been working around the clock right now and it's it's, you know, just the beginning of fourth quarter. But we got some good stuff for you today. Show sponsor, other than Virtue Health. Check us out. Uh, virtualliance.com. Thank you to those who are already sending in several opportunities to look at the consortium for January 1. Uh, virtualliance.com. Book a demo. We'll tell you more about the program and how we can take your group self-funded from fully insured or into group purchasing program. That being said, I want to welcome into our show our guest. Gentlemen, we'd met probably a year or two back. We had him at some boot camps and we told him about the story of Virtual Health, what we're doing. and you know, here's a guy that is cold calling. He's making cold calls themselves. He hired people in house for cold calling. And those cold callings led to, you guessed it, opportunities, clients, big clients, right? Opportunities to take self, take them self-funded and be different. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Chris Hoffer, welcome to the show, my friend. Let me unmute your mic there. Go ahead, Chris. You How's it going, John? Excellent. Excellent. So, Chris, you know, let's let's just start out and, and thank you for joining us. Um, we don't need to go into tons of background. You're an advisor. You've been in the business for some time now. And, you know, you, you, you you're in the prospecting game. I want you to just kind of start because I, when we first met and we did our Hunter's Clubs calls, you were a guy that was always you were making the calls. Tell us a little bit about maybe your prospecting over the last 24 months. From your messaging, your email messaging, your calls, what you're doing differently that you see working or what you've been doing that continues to work? Uh, it's just a lot of time. It's a lot, a lot of time on the phone, uh, a lot of a lot of hang ups, a lot of rejection. But I mean, you're, you're not you're just counting those just like uh, you're just putting putting the ticks on the paper, because if you don't make the calls, you don't get the connections and, and it doesn't take that many that many connections to, to to lead to appointments and once you have those appointments now you got a story to tell but uh you just get down in the trenches and you just dial and dial and have a good message to to you know visit with the cfo about because they're they're looking to save money uh the hr if you have to talk to the hr they're looking to retain employees they're looking for recruiting advantages and if you just have a you know general conversation with some of these uh some of these folks they're going to take a meeting and once you do, you just sound a little bit different about, hey, it's not all the sky's falling. Uh, there is some opportunity. So, you know, let's have a conversation. Yeah. And so, you you know, what I want to get out to them and you can kind of reinforce it because you're making calls and you got your team making calls is, is you know, they say 3% of buyers are ready to buy now. And you, you've got to look at your own self and I think about stuff we teach on here. And then when it hits in real life, you see it, it's like, well, Sometimes you're ready to buy something. You're looking for somebody to call you. 
and they just happen to market to you and it's the right time. I mean, that's how Facebook does their ads, right? You do Google search something, they slam you with ads, right? Showing interest. And by making those calls, that's going to take the time. The the rejection always is the rejection that they don't ever want to hear from you. They may just not want to hear from you right now. And finding those people that are ready to talk now is the key. Would you agree? I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And so let's, you know, we'll talk, we'll get into this group in a minute, but you've made calls yourself. You make calls in house. Tell me a little bit about your prospecting now. Um, kind of the system. Is it, how do you buckle down and make the calls? Are you doing time blocking using a dialer? What, what's going on to get it done? That's kind of, you've migrated over to make it easier for you over time. Uh, the answer is yes. And yes. I mean, so you have to, you have to time block or, it just doesn't happen uh, because if you wait for, hey, I want to wait for the perfect time to dial. It's never the perfect time to dial. The perfect time to dial is right now. Uh, so, you know, set set your goal. If you want to, ha- you know, have 100 dials a day, it's either, you know, do it manually or use an auto dialer. Auto dialers are a lot faster. Uh, I mean, you've got to make the systems and everything talk. But it's so important that every day you make dials uh, because if you just, you know, to, for myself, I'm better to try to make a hundred dials, a hundred outgoing dials a day to hit my numbers. And there's some days I get goose eggs, but there's some days that I get three or four appointments too. Uh, but the biggest piece is, you know, the follow up, make it consistent. I mean, every two weeks or whatever your cadence is of, of call and email, you got to have that consistency going because I've had clients that, that, you know, finally take the meeting. And it's after I've reached, called them and emailed them eight, eight or 10 times at, on, you know, on two week intervals is like, Hey, I saw your emails and I've been meaning to get back with you. Uh, and then it's just the right time. Uh, and the, the gentleman that we're going to talk about later today, it was the right time for him. Yeah. I think, I mean, I can't tell you now when you've got, I think I talked about it on the show before, when you've got a company that has got a salesperson and they're reaching out and it's actually something you need. You just mm-hmm. got some other shit going on right now. Yeah. I'm confident sometimes when I see the outreach from that person that they're not going to stop outreaching to me. And I'm going to, I'm going to make them reach me another next month or the month after, and I'm going to do business with them. So those that are doing it, new guys is specifically right. New guys, especially is, is don't quit. This is a long game. Marketing is a long game. Um, we just invested in a whole new marketing system and things we're doing. It's crazy. It's tons of work. It's tons of time trial and error and it's going to take time to get there and so you know we can't stress that enough is is stay on these prospects even if they give you a hard time on the phone i can't tell you how many clients the hardest toughest ones on the phone were the best meetings that i had the best customers now they're not touched for so long they're hard to get into and then when you get in they're not they're not so they're not so tough in the meeting it's just on the phone and people yeah. fold they roll over they give up and, you know, you just got to go in it with your head down. It's not easy. Do a power hour. I mean, we were doing some calls to advisors now. And we made the mistake when I was in retail of manually dialing. And, you know, five years ago, four years ago, not as many good tools were out then. And, you know, my guy would dial like he's he's from Wall Street, manually dial, make $80 a day, which was a ton of work for him. But now you can sit, put in a dial and Chris, what? You can get a hundred dials in. It's dialing multiple numbers yeah. at once. Yeah, I can get a hundred dials in in two hours, and yeah. and I, a gentleman just the other day, and I think I got a follow up call with him uh, Monday, uh, that they you know they can dial three numbers at a time, or you can get a dialer that'll dial ten numbers up at a time, uh, and I sat there and literally watched him for fifteen minutes, and I don't know he he got in touch with like five live voices in fifteen minutes, and I was like shit, sometimes it takes all day to get that. I mean a couple hours to get that. And so I'm, I'm looking into, uh, that system. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great, they're great tools, guys. If you're cold calling, you get an Excel list, you pop it in, pl- put on your headphones and start dialing. I, you know, we are using, I think it's a system called connect and sell right now that we've had some success with, but there's a few out there Just search for dialers. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's all about getting people on the phone to pitch. Yeah. That's the hardest part is getting them on the phone. So if you got, three, four di- numbers dialing at once waiting for somebody to pick up. It's just going to speed up your process for those who are cold calling. It's an incredibly smart investment. So, well, I mean, here's another thing. I mean, you've had this, you've had Tony Hughes on the call 
a couple of different times. I mean, once with combo prospecting and once with uh, tech powered sales. Uh, highly encourage you to read those books. Uh, in fact, I'm in a course with Tony right now just on, you know, just on some some fill in the pipeline type stuff and just going through the the why are we doing what we're doing to just get a better understanding and confidence for that message. So you guys got to got to take and invest some money in yourself and systems to make things easier to and more productive. Yeah, I mean, invest in yourself. It's it's super it's super simple to use those tools. Now, so talk to me about this prospect, cold call. How long did it take to get them? Just just walk us through because I want advisors out there to understand. You know, they hear, you know, you land a hundred life group, which is significant revenue for you. What did it take to get there? Uh, I think we outreached to or reached out to Jim uh, probably five or six times. And coming a little bit closer to, I'm sure he just recently got his renewal package uh, when when we reached out and he wanted to meet, you know, he's like, yeah, I agree. To, I, I'd like to hear what you've got to say uh, that, you know, on the backs of a 30 percent rate increase. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, everybody's looking for an answer then. Uh, and he wanted to meet right now. I tried to put him off a couple of weeks just to kind of, you know, fit him into the calendar. And he's like, I'd like to meet like this afternoon. So we met that afternoon. Uh, I could feel like, I mean, I could tell he, he had some pain. So we exploited that pain a little bit. And I said, you know, what are you doing to, what are you doing about it? I mean, you doing, what, what's your strategy? And he was like, well, I don't have a strategy. And I was like, well, that's, that's kind of an issue. Uh, we talked about, you know, what is he doing to control the claims? What's the broker can do to control the claims? What's the carrier doing to control anything? And it all, you know, you knew the answer before he, before he answered it. It's nothing. And I was like, well, if, if you're willing to work, uh, you know, we can, you know, we can build a plan that, you know, will give you the the latitude and the longitude to, to, to challenge some of these things and, and, and probably save some money and make the plan better. And I said, if you're committed to doing it, I said, you know, I, this is the data I'll need and we'll, we'll determine if that's a fit. And so he agreed. Uh, but I mean, it took, you know, five or six, five or six calls out on a consistent basis to, to get his attention. And then when he was ready, he said, yeah, let's do it. And he called you back and you just got to keep calling him, calling him, calling him, then you get him, right? right? Right. Yeah. I mean, again, guys, remember people are busy. You, you know, these guys are CFOs, owners of big companies. I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. We were, 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 might be three employees, five employees, 10 employees, 20 employees. We don't have the problems that a CEO or CFO have on 100 Life Group. We just don't. There's a lot more stuff and problems going on, and they're going to go to the biggest fire first. So don't quit. Don't give up. Talk to me about the company because this is a blue collar company. Yep. And, you know, we, you know, we don't, we say don't take them fully insured to RVP because it's, it's very difficult, a lot of problems and challenges. But at the same time, what happens if the company's in bad shape? Do you have a choice? So tell us a little bit of background of the company. Yeah. So this company had just like a lot of the, the other, you know, companies that size, they just kind of get overlooked. Uh, nobody really comes in with any strategies. And their only, you know, their only strategy over the last few years has just been, Hey, let's uh, let's water down the benefits. Pat, you know, the company would try to eat as much as they could, and pass the pass the balance on to the to the employees. And they got to that point to where that you know the the plan that they had was a you know high deductible plan. So you're out of options there. Uh, the employees they couldn't stomach any more. And then you then you try to give them a 30% rate increase. They they can't afford it. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about groceries or doing whatever. And they, they just, they, there's no more to give. And the company standpoint, they didn't have any more to give either. So they were looking at answers. And so, you know, just like John said, I mean, RBP's an answer down the road, but, you know, you'd rather not take that right out of the gate. Uh, but at, at this, with this client here, we didn't have any choice. I mean, we had to, we had to, you know, ratchet back the premiums back to where, you know, prior prior to that 30 yeah, percent increase so, so they're, they're, they're at 30 percent and it's basically like no we can't even do it we can't keep benefits anymore yeah. if this is the case and so they, they've got to go to extreme measures and you know my my uh my mentor tom emmerich told me a lot about this is just just larger corporations not wanting to make the change the per and per per year profit margin that means 
you know, you got a hundred employees, how much you divide your profit by the year, how much does each employee make you? Five thousand, six thousand. When you're hovering over six, seven thousand dollars per employee per year profit margin, uh, you know, that's not that much. So twenty percent increase, you know, cuts your profit margin fifteen, twenty percent. And so this is thirty percent increase. It's it's basically we're not offering health coverage anymore. So you're going in thinking we're going to just take them self funded, and they're they're saying we need more, right? And, and so you introduced them to, to to RVP. Tell tell us a little bit about that, and we'll go into more of managing it. Well, we talked about RVP and the, the challenge that you know RVP in a metropolitan area it's a little bit easier, but you get a met an RVP in a rural setting, your do, your hospitals got two hospitals out there and they can they can literally shut you down so if you don't have the the back end support from a from a single case agreements and stuff like that and a good tpa and in a good engagement tool or system to educate the employees and the employees only hear what they want to hear nobody nobody listens until they're sick and then 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 it becomes an issue but if you've got a, an HR, and we've got an HR lady down there that's a champion on this. And, you know, she said, hey, my, my guys, I mean, an HR, they really care about the employees. I was like, my guys just can't afford this. And I was like, well, I understand that, Tara. If that's the case, then you've got to help me. I can help you, but you've got to help me. You can't cut my legs out from under me because there is going to be some, there's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some challenges that, you know, doctors are going to say they don't take it. And they take insurance. They they just don't recognize it. So it's about an education and 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 RBP is a it is a solution, uh, but it it take it takes some work. And this group has been some work uh, and and some hand holding. But you know we got through it, and they the client couldn't be happier. And what's that like now? You know, because I talk about when you go self funding. The first year is going to be rocky. You warn them to change. The best thing you can do is educate them. Go out there regularly. Go out there after the first month. Yeah. But after you get results, and we'll 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 let, let Chris tell you the the cumulative savings from staying fully insured on this case. But what's it like once you get results and you get the trust in the client? You know, from you consulting them, from believing you, and things like that. What's it? What's the difference from when you start to when you get actual results? The biggest thing is, I mean, when you're talking to the employees, the employees don't believe that, hey, if we call the concierge, if we call the helpline, uh, you can get a lot of your services and procedures done for free. You just got to, you've got to engage. And, and so that resonates to a lot, you know, a certain, certain population. Uh, but you also get when you're, you know, going in there and introducing a, 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 a custom plan, uh, they say, they say it sounds like it's too good to be true, but you look back to what's the status quo and what they had before they really didn't like it because they weren't getting the help and support from the from the broker and the carrier on that but you're telling them about something new and they they don't believe it but going back fast forward to the renewal uh you know some of the people that that had that them or their spouse was on a lot of medications and we was not only able to help them get that medication for free and and cut some copays out but assist them in a way that you know their their son had a you know a, a mental mental issue and he needed some rehab and stuff like that and i mean you've got a team there that's on that stuff like that and it it the guys was crying i mean and uh you know these this is some these are some lumber guys i mean they're not emotional guys i mean but you the people that really that you know that we really helped and impacted had a guy that had a, a hip surgery and we helped go through a lot of channels on him helping him get stuff, you know, it's just handholding. I mean, but you, you really become a part of that company uh, with your service team. You know, when you put a plan like this in out, it's not just like a, a fully insured plan, but, but on the same hand, you're going to have a client for a long, long time. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, that's the key guys. You want results. I always laugh when people say, well, you know, com competing against you, no brokers coming and taking myself onto the client unless I screwed up myself. Yeah. Because the results that I get, the intelligence we have, what we're able to do, what they know where we came from, it's very difficult to get fired. Can you get fired? Yeah, you can screw things up. But once you get outcomes for these clients, they do what you say. I mean, I had a client call me the other day. He was opening up another company with 15 people on. He's like, John, just pick out a plan. Uh, I trust you. Just tell me what plan to you and just pick it out. 
now again, fully insured Mark, but he just, he knows what we do and he has the trust and confidence and certainty in us to where he doesn't have to question and look over his shoulder on everything and be untrustworthy with the advisor. So, you know, it's, it's a big difference when you go more from a consultant to just kind of peddling the rate every year. Now, in some markets, it is what it is in small group, smaller groups. That's what it is. But in the larger groups, you really can make a significant difference. Chris, we were talking, chatting before the show and, you know, there's so many solutions, there's so many things to put together. And how did you kind of get your mind wrapped around that? And and what should the advisor be focusing on here? Um, you know, from sales or going, you know, learning every solution, this and that. What 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 did you do here in this group and what did you learn over time to focus on to be more successful? I'll tell you, I spent about five years trying to find a silver bullet. I went to about every conference that you could think of, you know, Nelson's, uh, you know, FMMA. I mean, you, it, it, every place. And you heard about these these custom plans and, and and tried to figure out, hey, man, that really makes sense. I like, you know, I like this TPA. I like this, you know, this nurse Deb. What I mean, there's a countless things that that you could, you know, plug into play. <laughs> but when it really comes down to it, if you're an advisor, you need to be finding out, you need to be worried about the next client and and, and finding and partnering with a solution like, uh, you know, Virtue that, that has all, it's already vetted all those, those vendors out there that actually work. And I'm not saying that some of the vendors don't work. I'm just saying that they have vendors that work together and that's crucial. So if you've got a package solution, John's been doing this stuff way before I did. And I mean, he cut his teeth on some things that, uh, you know, and he's, he's had those lumps and, and it's very important to have a, you know, an alliance like that, that, that is vetted. And not only that, but if, if the wheels fall off and the wheels will fall off, they've got the, the power and the numbers to go ask for some concessions that me as an individual broker that I wouldn't, because if I would have tried to do all this stuff by myself, Number one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I just, I wouldn't have known what to do because uh, self-funding wasn't my game. I was a, I was a small group broker that once it got above 50 lives, uh, I was out because I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to compete with a Gallagher Machino or anything like that. But what in reality, I can outcompete those guys because I got guys and solutions like, you know, John and, and Craig over there that have some solutions to actually impact those guys. And now I can play in a playground that I wasn't used to. And that's really an underserved market because you would think once a client reaches a hundred lives, they'd have all the access and the tools. They don't have any more than anybody else. And really that, those are the folks that you, that you can actually go in and help and get paid to do it. Yeah, it's excellent. I mean, it's just, a, uh, you learn more as you go every day. I'm, I'm still learning. It's a complex market. It's tough as a retail advisor to get the experience and self funding you need because there's so many moving parts, so many things can go wrong. And you don't want to le learn necessarily cut your teeth on your client to new clients because you may not keep them. But what should be the focus of an advisor instead of these, you know, conference and learn about every solution? What should they be focusing on to be more successful? They need to be focused on getting more. I mean, here's the here's the bottom line as far as I'm concerned. You need to be focused on getting more clients, be focused on your mar marketing, your tech stack and, and, and trying to outreach to more. Get yourself in front of more people uh, all the time, because if you've got a filled up pipeline, if if you lose one. So what? Uh, I mean, nobody likes to lose a client, but you're going to have to replace those clients. And, and the only way to grow is, is to market. And the only way to market is pick up the phone. Uh, you know, if you're if your email, your ads, I, I don't I mean, if you're face to face meeting, but if you pick up the phone and cold call, people do answer the phone and they do take meetings. Uh, I set like three or four meetings this week with people that aren't in my backyard. And that's the thing that COVID taught me is they don't have to be in Oklahoma. I, I mean, that group was in, in Texas. I'm talking to a group in Virginia right now. And I had a client over there in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And the one in Arkansas, I, I've never even met them. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. You can open up the playbook really across country now. I mean, mm -hmm. I function nationally. You know, there, it's accepted now. It's now a yeah. virtual world. It's accepted. Do I think the in-person meetings are better? Yeah, but if there's not enough prospects in your market to prospect to, um, 
you know, you, you kind of got to stretch out a little bit, or maybe yeah. you want to get a vacation home in a certain state. That's always a reason to, uh, there you go. to call yeah. in that state, right? You build yep. some business up down there and get some clients there. It's a, it's yeah. a good reason. But, um, yeah, I can't, I can't agree more guys out there. The re real message is, is market and sell, learn how to market better, learn how to sell better. You'll have a lot more success. Um, than just learning about the solutions. Are they important? Of course, having the right partners are important. That's a key to it. But you can't, you know, just have shiny objects and think, like Chris said, looking for a silver bullet. If you have a silver bullet and you got nobody to talk to. Yeah, what good is a silver bullet? <laughs> yeah, what good is the silver bullet here? So like we always say is, who's the best marketer in the world? Well, who sells the most hamburgers in the world? Right. McDonald's. They're the exactly. best marketer in the world. Now, does McDonald's make the best hamburgers? God, no. They even made a movie about how you could die from eating their hamburgers, okay? We don't even know who makes the best hamburger in the world because they don't know how to market. But McDonald's does. So do the big guys in our in our industry. And they get in front of more clients and they get more business. You know, mostly my successful advisors is always the ones that know how to market the best. And so stick to marketing and prospecting. If you're new find a way to get money to spend on cold calling and prospecting those out there that are against cold calling. You're out of your mind. I can't tell you how many people build their whole business around it. Are there other ways to do it? Yes. There's stuff to combo it with and, and kind of nurture them and, you know, make it all work together. But at the end of the day, you got to pick up the phone and get people on the call and get in front of people in meetings, tell them a story, come with a new story. And, um, I might as well pitch it next next Thursday. We're going to be doing going over a strategy, give you a free strategy kind of employer pitch. I'm going to be doing a pitch to about 40 or 50 CFOs. It was supposed to be in person. It got moved to virtual, but I'm going to be going over that presentation um, probably on the next webinar next Thursday on some of the things you could say. You know, Chris, it's creating urgency. What's coming down the pike? Uh you know, talking about the new problems that are to come because you got to get people to take action, right, Chris? It's yep. if you don't get them, create urgency, people just sit. They're left to their own vices. And I'm not saying lie to your clients, lie to your prospects. Salesmen are needed, Chris, right? It, we're needed because if we don't, if we're not there, people won't do shit. That's right. Yeah, they just want to keep kicking the can down the road and, until it gets, until it gets, I talked to a CFO today. He said, uh, you know, now's just not the right time. Uh, let's look at it after the first of the year. It's like, and I was thinking, what's after the first year? He said, you know, we're just struggling to stay afloat right now. And I went back and looked at it and it was only like an 80 or 90 live case. And I was like, yeah, I'll put it in my deal. But I, my, my, my next action on him is I'm going to get a hold of the HR person probably tomorrow and say, hey, tell me what's going on over there. You guys, I mean, it looks from what your, your 5,500 data, it looks like you're getting crushed. Uh, what are you guys doing about it? I mean, if we could free up this, is that going to help you guys hire a new, you know, some new staff or, or, or is it going to help you to retain employees? I mean, what, how, what's going on? Uh, and, because and we, there are we, solutions. Yeah. And we put together a case study for Chris here and we'll put it together. You know, if you have a, if you have a case with us, we're going to put it together once it's completed, we just completed it, but we're going to put, we'll put it together in your branding as well. Let me see if I could pull up the case study here. If this is working. Bear with me. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Never mind. It's not working. But Chris, tell us about how much they saved year one versus renewal. 120 life employer. 120, 120 life employer. Uh, we saved them a half a million dollars. And that was some hard work. It was some luck. Uh, we had to roll up our sleeve because, you know, when we got this group, if any of you have, you know, ever dealt with, uh, you know, the Bukas on a group that's that size, you're not going to have squat for data. And so we had to go down and get individual health apps on this group. And, you know, but when we did that, we uncovered some things that, you know, gave us the advantage uh, to, you know, evacuate a few claims, come back in with a, with a solution. And then, you know, with the right partner set that that John and Virtue's got allowed us to, you know, identify some things and and evacuate some claims and get some savings on some stuff immediately. And then in the group, just they run good. Yeah. I mean, look, guys, 
talk about the work involved. He went down. We didn't have, we just, you know, now we can run without claims data. We've got ways to do it with actually newer technology that we're using this year to pull claims from other people uh, from the group. But, you know, he went down and did IMQs on 120 life group. That's a lot of work. I remember doing it in my time on 50 life groups and it was a hell of a lot of work. But that's what it takes to get, you know, six figure accounts here, half a million dollar year one savings. You take that half a million, you compound that over time every year. We're going to help Chris. Yeah. I think we put it together for him. We're going to put it for, for performing together for him to show him every year yeah. how much cumulative savings you've generated to say, here's what I'm worth to you. The last show we had Redmond on, he got a hundred thousand dollar raise year one with two million dollars in savings. A lot bigger group. Yeah. I think Chris's was even bigger. Now look, they ran good this year, and that's great. Okay. Savings is even more, right? Will a bad year come? Yes, it's inevitable, right? That's the virtue consortium to pool your bad years. We didn't need it this year, but the cost savings, the pharmacy solution, the administration, all the components needed to save money get you the outcomes you want because you're out there pitching. You better be able to deliver on the outcomes that you're promising or, you know, you'll see on the 5500s, they change their broker every three years because broken promises. Um, so moral of the story is, guys, get the right solution. Make the calls. Chris, what are some final thoughts that you want to give brokers that listening out there that are thinking, I can't do it. I can't go above 50 lives. I can't do self fund. I can't make the calls. I don't like calls. What are some of the things you, you want to say to them? Well, uh, I didn't think I could do groups over 50 either. Uh, but once, you know, once we, you know, finally got with the right partners that had a solution like John and Craig, I mean, that, 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 that check that box. And I mean, there's other, there's other outfits out there, but I mean, they, they've got a, a package solution that just works and the, and they're fun to work with. Uh, number two, you've got to be, you got, if you're not prospecting, if you're not growing, you're going backwards and you're dying. So, I mean, if that, that's kind of a gut check, if you're not, if you're not willing to put in the work to market in some fashion, whether it's conferences, you know, cocktail parties, whatever, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I, it's easier just to pick up the phone and call somebody for me than it is to go try to do all the, the golf and stuff like that. I mean, if I'm going to go golf, I want to go with golf with somebody I like. Uh, so pick up the phone and get, you know, the phone gives you the latitude to go in whatever state that you want. I mean, if your state's not big enough, pick up the phone, block off some time to make the calls, send the emails, be consistent, get a system and rinse and repeat. And if you do that, uh, you will add, uh, several dollars to your revenue on a, on an annual basis. And, I, and it, just, it just happens. I love it. I love it. I think we gave you the award at the last heads up advisor yeah. Yeah. for, you know, it, it's basically who's out there has the tenacity to go out there and really bang the street. And the progression we saw, you know, we run, you know, with virtue, we run, we, we were running weekly calls, sales calls. And the progression you had over 12 months was, you know, night and day. And, you did, you took action. And really that, that's a difference. There might've been some guys that, that knew more about self-funding or knew more about this in the group, but they didn't want to take action. And so you're not going to get results if you have nobody to tell the story to. So hats off to you. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll look forward to having you on again with another story. Uh, keep saving them some money. So thanks for joining us, Chris. Hey, thanks, John. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Another episode again, check us out. Next week, we're going to have Chris's case study up in the next 48 hours. You can download it, read about it, reach out to him if you'd like to hear more from him. Um, we're going to have a, we uh, a live cast next Thursday. I'm going to be going over some strategies, some ideas with a new PowerPoint, shorter PowerPoint to go over for pitching in 2023. Some things coming down the pike. Check it out. Don't miss it. Uh, that registration will be up on the site tomorrow. So, Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Same place, same time. Heads up, advisor. Have a good one.